Hi. I'm here in front of the world famous second city in Toronto, Canada, about to perform a show. I'm going to be doing new material for the first time in about three years, and my giggling idiot friend behind the camera there thought it would be really funny to document my bone-crushing, soul-sucking stage fright leading up to this, so let's go. You still rolling? Yes. You can turn it off. It's not gonna be like this, is it? <laughs> yeah, very funny. It's not gonna be like that? Why do I I knew, I knew, you know what? Fucking Shahori told me you were gonna do this to me. <laughs> the whole thing started about, I guess about eight years ago. Uh, I've always done a lot of plays, a lot of theater, and I just started developing a really bad stage fright. And a good friend of mine, Rob Wilson, suggested I should try stand-up sometime because A, he thought it was funny, and B, he said, once you do comedy, you'll never be have stage fright on, on stage doing theater again because you'll know true fear. So I, I went and I did it, and I experienced true fear. It was, it was horrible, but I actually got a, a bit of a taste for it, too. It's kind of like torture, only self-inflicted I, I guess I'm a masochist but you know without the ball gag because then people wouldn't understand what I was saying it'd still be funny but in a different different way fuck off if anyone if anyone has ever actually met Paul you know how he sinks his teeth into an idea and he seemed to think that it would be funny to document just how scared I get. I hate you, you said. Remember that cartoon with the dog, and they the, got the little dog and the big dog, and the little dog's going, hey, Spike, 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 Spike. Yeah, that's Paul and me. I'm the big dog, and Paul is like, hey, 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 are you ready? You nervous? Uh huh? You nervous? You nervous? You nervous? He's been driving me absolutely fucking batshit. He is actually hoping that I fail tonight. He's hoping I bomb. And then he will go into work tomorrow and he'll play it back for everyone and say, Oh God, this, this is where he bombs. Check this out. Okay, this is the part that's supposed to be funny. No one laughed. <laughs> that's so funny. He's actually a, he's a sadistic prick. It's, well, I've already, I've already been to the bathroom once. And as a rule, I tend to urinate roughly 17 times in the two hours before going on stage. So I've got 16 to go. And I'm afraid that a little pee will come out. I have a feeling right now he's going to be following me in there a few times. This stupid fucking camera. I need to rehearse. I came out here to rehearse. Can I rehearse? Welcome, welcome to you. Fuck, where did I come from? Well, at least, fuck. Best goddamn change the fate of the city. This is my first time doing new material in about three years, and this has never been tested in front of ever, anyone before and uh, so uh, it, it could very well suck and I guess, I guess we're gonna see. I, uh, yeah, I saw him uh, I saw him at the back. He was just sort of pacing around. As a matter of fact, he looks scared. I feel nervous for him. I think he's totally gonna freeze. I can't believe I let you talk me into this, Busetta, you prick. I, I actually hate you for this. This is now beer number four, gone, because I'm so nervous. Thank you very much. Take your microphone and give me some space. I don't believe this. I have totally misplaced one of my props. Do you have something to do? Uh, yes, I'll have it Don't you have some models to hit on or something? Sorry. You gonna keep following me? Here, come, follow this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tim Sims Playhouse Character Night, and here are your hosts, the Shahori Brothers! Yay! Yeah! Gone over the script about a hundred times, and I keep getting stuck on the same two spots. Uh, the same spots every single time. It's like there's this mental block in my head. Historically speaking, it doesn't happen when I'm on stage, but it might. And if so, I'm pretty much fucked. Um, I'm counting on the fact that there will be enough laughter at the time that. I will actually remember to say these things, but uh, well, we'll see, won't we? But I also have the script on the table out there as a cheat, so... You didn't move it, did you? No, I, I also need the script as a, as a prop at the end, so if you moved it, I have to get it. I'm not kidding. Paul. Paul, that's the contract of Paulette at the end, so I need it. If for no other reason as, as that prop. I think I actually am going to barf. Hey there! Thanks for coming down and welcome to Li Hu Fucks, the greatest Chinese buffet in this city. When I say it's great, let me tell you it's great. You want to know why it's great? It is the only Chinese buffet that is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Oh. It's fantastic. I eat every meal here. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know I'm, I'm sounding a bit like a commercial right now. Want some words? Right, I'll give you some words. In eight years of doing this shit, nothing has ever gone as poorly as that. Those are my words. Turn it off. Why isn't I tell you it's a bad idea and then you turn the fucking light on? <laughs> when he approached me about the show, I was a bit skeptical and I said, Why do you want to do it? And he gave me four words to impress Jody Foster. I said, sure. If you do this shit and you do well, you remember it for a week. You're on top of the world for like a week after doing something really good. You do really badly, six months minimum. And even if you do better in the intervening time, you're always going to remember that. That, that, that one. So uh, I think uh, I think we just saw my farewell performance. See, that's what laughter sounds like, in case you missed it. To say it went poorly may be a bit of a misnomer. I mean, you can't necessarily equate the lack of laughter with a lack of funny. I mean, think of Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, silent movies. There is no sound. That guy holding onto the clock is going to fall, you know? It's funny. Just didn't hear anything. A glutton for punishment. Not only do I bomb, but I've invited a, a documentarian out to document my stage fright before and after. That's pathetic. Thank you. I had a cousin once who really wanted to impress Jodie Foster, so he decided to become an accountant. Um, he, I think on the internet or something, he had read that she was really into fiscal responsibility. I've, I've had plenty of support so far. I've got Vicetta with the camera, who is pretty much fucking torturing me. I've had a, a few other comics and performers tonight come out and tell me that, you know, I just have to work it a little more, work it a little more, work it a little more. Okay, so, like, like, 
sorry, Mom. My name is Cassandra. <laughs> I'm Stephanie. And we saw, um, we saw a show tonight. What's your, what's, what's yeah. your, that guy? That guy? He's really good. He was really last funny. Week. Yeah, we saw him, well, no, like, more like last month. So he took to the stage and he showed a lot of promise. Um, then he started, um, speaking. He was funny, but I think he was drunk tonight. You know, if I was Jody Foster, I, I'm wondering who, who I'd want to impress. I was going to say David Foster, but they're not even related, so that probably wouldn't happen. Because you're fucking cool. You're really good. Okay. <sighs> 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 Los Angeles place. Um, last name Foster, initial J. There's no denying it. I'm drowning these sorrows for, well, I'd like to say the next week, but the truth is probably the next year or two. My advice to Greg? You know the old saying about a thousand monkeys and a thousand typewriters? I would like to see him in a room with them where the monkeys eventually sort of overpower him. And I guess you don't really need the typewriters so much, but 